Good day grade 11s. In this lesson we're going to go through a control test that I've actually put on the system and we're going to go through it nice and slowly and I'm going to work through it with you so that you can understand what we are doing. In the first question, the first part of this lesson we're going to just do the multiple choice. So it says the electric field experienced by a point charge is an 800 nanocoulombs. Let me just get a pen. It's 800 nanocoulombs at a distance of 30 centimeters from the center of the sphere and it wants to know what is the charge carried by the sphere. So they want to know what is Q. You've got the distance, albeit in centimeters, and they tell you the electric field has a point charge, by a point charge is 800 nanocoulombs. So now if you look at your formula sheets, you will see that there is an equation that says E is equal to KQ over R squared. And the reason we want to use that formula is because this is electric field, which is E, so therefore we've got that. Q is what they want, okay, and D, which is the same as R, is the distance. But what is wrong with this distance? The first thing we need to realize is that what's wrong with this distance is that it's in centimeters. So we need to change it to meters. So therefore we can say 30 divided by 100, because there's 100 centimeters in a meter is going to be 0,3. So that is our R. And then we need to substitute in K, and K is going to be Coulomb's constant, which is also on your formula sheet, which is 9 times by 10 to the 9. So therefore, we can substitute in this equation. It says E is equal to KQ over R squared. So therefore, R squared is equal to KQ over E. So therefore, R is just going to be the square root of that. And obviously, it's going to be the positive square root. So it's the square root of 9 times by 10 to the... Oh, shit, I'm an asshole. Okay, let's just... Now we want to solve for Q. So we need to go E times R squared all over K is equal to Q. All that I've done is taken the R squared across and then divided by the K. So E is 800. So it's 800 times by the distance, which is 0, 3 squared, all over K, which is 9 times by 10 to the 9. And that is going to give us the charge Q. So we're going to pop that in our calculators. And we're going to say, okay, that's 800 times 0, 3 equals, and then remember we have to times by another 0, 3 because actually that's 0, 3 squared, divided by 9 exponent 9 equals, and we get 8 times by 10 to the minus 9. So we get 8 times by 10 to the minus 9 and if you look carefully that is the answer C because N stands for nano and nano is 10 to the minus 9. Right, let's move on. Now it says, a learner is provided with three identical resistors to insert in any manner in the circuit. Which one of the following circuits will allow the largest current through the ammeter? Now the nice thing about this is that this is actually theory. And we know that the more resistors in parallel, right, what happens? The smaller the resistance, and therefore the greater the current. So which one of these is going to have the greatest current? The one with the most resistors in parallel. So that has to be C. Easy peasy. Next question. It says work done per unit charge is what? Okay, work done per unit charge. Now, I was taught something when I was at school, which was this. It was, can John very well afford cigars since James went, alas, very occasionally. And what is going on, whoops, and what is going 
And what is going on is that these are forming little triangles. So in other words, coulombs is joules over volts, volts is watts over amps, watts is volts times amps, etc, etc. And the reason I tell you this is because they want work done per unit charge. Now work is measured in joules and charge is measured in coulombs, which is a C. So we want to know what is joules divided by coulombs and joules divided by coulombs is volts. So therefore the correct answer is volts, but volts is known as potential difference. The correct answer here is B. If you didn't understand this or if you don't know this little thing, I will tell it to you again. It goes can, John, it's something you need to learn, very well afford cigars since James went alas very occasionally and the reason that I was taught this when I was at school because back in the ox wagon days when I was at school we didn't have formula sheets whereas you guys can go and look on your formula sheets and you will find all of these relations also you should know you should know that the work done per unit charge is the potential difference which is volts okay let's move on it says the following question refers to the potential energy diagram below so we've got potential energy and course of reaction we start at 200 we go up past 600 to the top of 800 and then back down so before we even look at this do you agree that this is definitely an endothermic reaction why because the energy has increased endothermic reaction because the energy has increased now it says what is the activation energy of the forward reaction well the activation energy is the difference between the energy that the activated complex has and the energy that the reactants have so therefore it is the difference between 800 and 200 so it's 800 minus 200 which equals 600 kilojoules and if we look we can see that is C okay nice and easy now let's move on okay it says 1.5 consider the incomplete chemical equation below so you've got X plus 2HNO3 which is nitric acid plus zinc nitrate gives us, oh sorry, something plus nitric acid gives us zinc nitrate plus water plus carbon dioxide. Okay, I'm rewriting CO2. Okay, and it says which of the following is represented by X? Okay, so do you agree that we have got something plus an acid, something plus an acid is giving us a salt plus a water plus a carbon dioxide and what you guys should have learned is that the something plus an acid that gives us a salt to water and carbon dioxide is a carbonate and it's a metal carbonate it's a metal carbonate in this case because we're starting with zinc so therefore it has to be A because that there is a carbonate right 1.6 it says which one of the following statements is correct for an endothermic reaction. I remember an endothermic reaction is one that takes in heat from the surroundings. Okay, from the surroundings. That's what it does. So let's have a look at what our options are. Okay, it says the temperature of the surroundings increases. No, it doesn't because the heat is taken from the surroundings. So that's that. The enthalpy change for the reaction is negative, and that is not true because we're talking about delta H. And if you look over here, we saw that delta H here was actually positive because what is delta H? Delta H equals the heat of the products minus the heat of the reactants. That's what your enthalpy is. So for an enthalpy for an endothermic reaction, this has to be greater than zero because we've taken in energy. So over here, when they say to us, is the enthalpy change for the reaction negative? No, it's not. Okay, heat flows from the surrounds into the system. Yes, that's what we want. So therefore, the correct answer here is C. Okay, grade 11s. This is the first 
part of our going through the control test, so this is lesson one, we will continue going through the long questions in the next lessons. Have a great day.